as you guys know um ronda rousey has been promoting her book her new memoir that just dropped right and she included a section which is basically two paragraphs where she doesn't even mention brendan by name but you get you know it's easy to work out it was brendan because brendan was her only um boyfriend before travis i'm assuming right especially public one so it's pretty obvious to know that she was definitely talking about brendan but she doesn't really even mention him by name it's just two paragraphs of an entire book but it's kind of lit brendan's world on fire but essentially in this book section she basically details how an ex of hers was mani- i was you know was a bit of a jackass i think the mind games thing is just a code word for being a bit of a dick i don't know how you guys read it but i don't think the mind games was like brendan actually playing mind games i just think brendan was a bit of a dick and a, and a shitty boyfriend um which is obviously understandable knowing how we know his personality we can definitely see that be the case but i thought she was also kind of clear about the whole thing like you know in a way kind of clear especially if you're the boyfriend involved you could read between the lines and see what she meant so in the segment in the section she said the following travis had been training with us for a while when it was announced that his first fight as an official member of our team would be against my ex-boyfriend my ex thrived on playing fucked up mind games with me when i had a fight um coming up and insisted we hid that we were dating so he wouldn't be labeled as ronda rousey's boyfriend as travis headed into the matchup i pretended it wasn't personal i tried not to be overly involved or emotional it wasn't my fight i was hoping he would win but i was in training camp so i didn't really think too much or more about it that is until it was on live tv and i lost my goddamn mind screaming at the top of my lungs get him travis while punching the arm of the person on the couch next to me when travis knocked him out at the end of the first round i didn't think it could get any more gratifying my ex covered up on the ground while travis pounded away on him the referee waved the match over then travis towering over the crumpled semi-conscious body of my ex leaned down and whispered something in his ear his words were indiscernible to the camera but i swear i could hear travis say ronda says fuck you so if you're the ex-boyfriend you should know what she's getting at but i don't think the mind games thing was like i wasn't super malicious but it's pretty clear that in my opinion that brendan was a shitty boyfriend you know even the thing here even just this briefing that she mentioned about every time her fight would come up Brennan would try to tell her not to be bait about their relationship so that he wouldn't be classed as Ronda Rousey's boyfriend, which is weird because at that time, Ronda was the most famous UFC fighter in the fucking world. Legitimately. She was the most famous. She was out there doing fucking bits, pulling numbers out. She basically legitimized the women's division in UFC. She made it like so, especially nowadays, guys don't really, you know, they, they, watch, they watch it all. They don't skip past the fucking women fights. They watch them all so i think she was the reason for it so for brendan to think being regarded as ronda rousey's boyfriend was demeaning or almost kind of diminished him was weird because she was more famous than him but again it shows that the guy has has always been the lulu this is what we've seen so far with this segment is that brendan has always been the lulu and he's always been the way he we kind of see him to be especially the ones that kind of hate watch his content anyway that's what happened right so brendan then decided to reply on the recent episode of the fire and the kid and this is the reply that we're going to react to together because i haven't actually seen this whole thing but i clipped most of the segment which i think is in but i haven't actually heard what he said in detail so we're going to react to it in, you know together and see what we think about some of the stuff that brendan's had to say regarding ronda rousey's comments in her book let's see how he replies to this because he's definitely seen it he's definitely read it he knows what was said you know let's see what he says about it let's see if he tries to feign you know ignorance or tries to purposely misinterpret it or something right let's see or brian maybe tries to that's another thing too maybe brian tries to talk for him because that's what happens in a lot of these things brendan gets called out in public and then brian steps in front right steps in front steps in front like let's see um here's a quick video on them real quick <laughs> like this i have a bunch of people when i posted my take on it from uh the shop show people are like dude i had no idea that's happened this weekend all right here's a quick video of I read mind games as making her feel insignificant when the attention should have been on her. That's a very real thing Brandon does. The ego is wild. Making her, I read mind games as Brandon making her feel insignificant when the attention should have been on her. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if I read that. Because again, I'm only taking that one example that she made because she used that as the first example about when it's her fight don't make it obvious that we're together type of thing 
Um, yeah, maybe that is just mind games, isn't it? I guess it's mind games. I guess that is mind game. But I, I'm just saying more so in the thing that I don't think Brendan was trying to play mind games. I honestly think he thinks these things. So he legitimately was annoyed that people were referring to him as Ronda Rousey's boyfriend. And he would, because you'd imagine before a fight, a fighter doesn't want to have any distractions, right? I'm assuming their family also know when your when your partner's in fight camp mode, you almost try to, um, what's that thing called? You almost try to, you almost try to protect them from any drama. You try and keep it away. Even if it's something that, that they should know about, you try to basically keep it close to your chest. You don't want to, you know, you kind of let them focus on a fight. But maybe in this case, Brendan is such a numpty, he thinks it's more important for him to get his feeling across and to let her know how her fame is negatively affecting him in that time that she's trying to prepare for a fight. You know, that's obviously a fucked up thing to do, but I don't think he's doing it. Honestly, I don't think he's doing it to play mind games. I just think he's so self-centered that his but i guess that's mind games isn't it what am i talking about that is obviously mind games he's so self-centered that his own needs in that moment trump hers even though she should be the priority in that moment because it's her fucking fights that's coming up and she needs to have a full focus on that not worrying about her fucking marital relationship situation at home but yeah and also i think a lot of it too him as well i think he has a thing like because i think he always mentioned didn't you mention before that oh she wasn't girly enough it's like ronda rousey has always been a bit of a tomboy i don't know about you i've never seen a picture of ronda rousey where i didn't see a tomboy so i don't know what he was thinking because allegedly i think there's a segment somewhere where i think she says something like you know no i think he mentions it and other other when they broke up actually he even mentioned it that she you know um he was too much of a man for her. she wasn't i don't know i just don't understand that that psychology as well it's like bro like she's exactly who she says she is on the t like i don't know whatever let's play the video big up Assad. it's a good point actually maybe it is mind games i've explained it the word i've I've went around the long way but but basically it is mind games what he basically did i just think i just don't think he's clever enough to do mind. you know what i mean that's what i think i just think he's a bit redacted personally um but hey we, i think we're both right in this case of them meeting each other in Riyadh. After the mall, after the mall. Alex, I'm I choose you. Get over here. Come on. Come on. Give me a hug, brother. I'll give you. Oh, Usyk ain't having it. So he's he's playing along there, but I mean, as a fighter, what Tyson's doing? I don't doing, like that stuff. For certain fighters that do this, I know a fighter that do this to try and lower your guard so you yeah, can. Yeah. <laughs> so he's being super charming yeah, but that's tyson like he does that with he, he did that with wilder too because those guys are all kind of like yeah, they don't know really what to make of this yeah Usyk was like okay you know in russian and ukrainian culture smiling just smiling is not done because oh really brian how much experience of russian and ukrainian culture do you have outside of watching videos of like stuff online that we've all seen how do you know that's the case honestly this guy bro like international school was wasted on him you look stupid so you don't just smile you're you're gonna be very you're gonna be like thank you yeah i heard if you if smile in russia they think you're gay mm -hmm. hey yo big up nj ranger big up nj ranger good fucking point he was smart enough to do the whole cast media work wasn't he <laughs> very good point he pulled the wool over everyone's eyes on that one right he definitely wasn't dumb enough for that. He definitely figured out <laughs> how to get the most out of that thing and then fucked over Theo. <laughs> he got his he got his stuff and was like, yeah, I, I, at least I got mine. Well, I got mine. I got my stuff. I got my millions. I ain't sure about you guys, but you brought us in. You brought us in. How are you going to just like run away with a bag? You, gonna, you brought us in. We all got scammed. Well, I got mine. I got my million. Fucking hell. Well, they just think you're, you that, that, they, 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 the idea in Russian culture is when you smile, you're a dumb, you're a dullard. So if you're like this, hi, how are you? 
That makes sense. That's why when you meet them, they 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 they're like this. Straight face. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah uh, Usyk was not having it. Yeah. Sm- yeah. Yeah. Peace out, Assad. Peace out. Take care, brother. Take care. Take care. Yeah. It's not. It, 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 again, with these streams, it's not about anybody being right or wrong. Like we're trying to fucking make sense of a redax anyway. That's the wrong thing, you know. It's just redacted shit. We're trying to make sense of, out of it because we don't get it, but it's just redacted shit. <laughs> You know, none of us are, we're all in the wrong because we're trying to make sense out of a legit double digit IQ person. Maybe what single digit IQ person who legitimately has like failed upwards. Um, it doesn't make sense because it shouldn't make sense, but it's fascinating to watch. It's fascinating to watch. Smiling is just considered really like for, for dumb dumb. So we rarely see Putin smile. Rarely. Do, do you see anything on Usyk Fury Chin? Like any hype? No, no, not at all. Like, there's no hashtag, sh- like, trending, nothing. I tried to look. Big up Wuhan Institute of Virology. Brian was born in the Philippines, then lived around the parts of Asia, North Africa, and Europe. His first time in the US, he was like 15 years old. You know what? You know what's interesting? You know what's funny, sorry? That's a very interesting background. But none of that is, like, none of that is mirrored in him. As a person. As a podcaster as a comedian because those are all incredible experience like that's what you should be doing for your kids giving them those incredible experiences where you're moving around the world they're meeting different people different cultures learning different languages whatever but none of that is on show on evidence anywhere in what he does the way he carries them none of that none of it zero we don't see any of that on like we just see we just hear him talk about how he wants to be a certain type of man on stage like on podcasts, what do we hear him do? Really, like he's not that interesting, not that fun, not that co- like. It's just kind of dead. It's really interesting, isn't it? Like <laughs> it's just like, huh? Like you'd never like if you didn't know what he what um Wuhan what Wuhan Institute of Biology said. If you didn't know that, you would never guess he was he went through that. Looking at him, you would never guess, or hearing what he says, hearing his worldviews, you'd never guess. Just your standard dude just talking out of his ass but actually he's lived a quote-unquote interesting life because of his parents and his jobs and the jobs that they had it's helped them move around the world but none of that is you know something that you see on the content at all kind of interesting it's like, really really that's weird. that's the only video i saw recently so yeah not much at all but i saw something brand new that popped up today all over the place on youtube <laughs> instagram everywhere <laughs> Oh, I love this. I, this is always the point. You know what? Body language. I'm not a body language expert, but all this type of stuff is a key in it. This pretending to be unbothered, like, like, you know, like, like yawning, stretching, you know, what's happening in the subject and like acting as if like, this is no big deal. Like making it out to be like, oh, like, like this is definitely a, a body language tell when somebody knows they're guilty you're trying to act like you didn't do anything and it's not that you haven't really been thinking about it you're just acting the way you would have before i don't know i just find it funny oh, um what do you got? so ronda rousey apparently you're in her new memoir again she, yeah she i'll just show you this article you the- by the way he said again keep that in mind he just said again just keep that in mind for later he said again i'm in a new memoir i don't know of playing fucked up mind games. That's that's the title. Uh, yeah, I obviously I don't I didn't read the book, so I don't know. But it says yeah. The book Rousey, just came out, or this is old. No, this is new. This, this is the, new one. It literally started popping up today. I saw. Hey, yo, big up cable cable hog. Okay, is that a cable hog? Um, travel doesn't necessarily improve the mind or your horizons. Not necessarily, but it should. You, that's what people travel for. You usually do that to expand to expand your mind and your horizons to kind of maybe see new things experience new things talk to different people like that's usually why you do it you know i know some people just do it just to kind of get hot and get a tan and hang out cool but especially when you're traveling to those type of places around the world you know there's a lot of rich culture there different i don't know but again maybe as well there's a there maybe there is also a way of doing that where you don't experience things, especially if you like go to private school, you get chauffeured from your um, parents' home to the private school, back and forth. Um, the private school also is English speaking for the most part. Um, you speak English at home. 
you don't really co- you don't really go out and kind of you know integrate yourself with the local community it's pretty easy to just go to places in and out go to a villa come back go to a villa come back i understand but i think in general it should you know it should inform your life it should kind of leave an impression on you that you then want to share with the world whatever it is i know it's a bit naff to say it i get it but for me that's what traveling should be about and you know in, it, i guess he wasn't really traveling he was mostly moving around with his parents especially his dad who might have been an undercover cia cia agent who knows but he i think he was working for some major bank um i think a middle eastern one i forgot no i think it's city bank actually was it i forgot don't matter he's working for a big bank so i guess that's why they were moving around and he i think the dad was like a middle east person correspondent you know go to person whatever um but hey it didn't it didn't really impact him in any way it is what it is you know it's not it's not a slight it's just you should be traveling to expand your mind and your horizons if you don't fair play so i don't know if you want to talk about this or not but she doesn't look like she's aged a minute no she looks great her mom has great genetics too though she's she looks fantastic (laughs) i don't think brendan wanted to compliment her Obviously, Brian, the first bucket, had to say something about what she looks like. But I don't think Brendan was too pleased about that being the first thing they said. Um, anyway. There's a couple of quotes. My ex thrived on playing fucked up mind games with me when I had a fight coming up. No, no, oh, oh, actually, uh, big up Will Lopez. Hold on. Did Chin say I didn't read it because he doesn't read? No, no, I think he, I think he said it because he didn't want to sound like he was co-signing what Ronda Rousey said. So I didn't read it, Brendan. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. Like he's more scared about what Brendan would think. I don't think because he doesn't read. Let's see. I tried looking for. It's I'm like, really, really. That's weird. the only video I saw recently. So yeah, not much at all. But I saw something brand new that popped up today, all over the place on YouTube, <laughs> Instagram, everywhere. Oh, um, what we got? So Ronda Rousey, apparently, you're in her new memoir again. She, yeah, she. I'll just show you this article you in the first here. One? I don't know. You see that, by the way? He says again, and Brian says, were you in the first one? I don't know. Yeah, you do know. So he's saying again because he knows he was in the first one. That's why he's saying it. So I love the instant lie. I love it. Right on cue lie. Of playing fucked up mind games. Shh, that's uh, that's the title. Uh, yeah, I, obviously, I don't. I didn't read the book, so I don't know. But it's... Uh... Yes, yeah, so I think he says, obviously, I didn't read the book. Oh, I get it what you mean. He said, obviously, I didn't read the book. That's a weird sentence, isn't it? It's obviously, I didn't read the book like I can't read. Obviously, I didn't read the book. Or is he saying, obviously, I didn't read the book. Please, Brenda, don't fire me. I still need my MacBook, please. I still need my MacBook, please. Maybe that's what he means. Good point. Maybe that's what he's actually scared. <laughs> obviously, I didn't read it. I can't read. I can't read. <laughs> Says, yeah, the book Rousey. just came out or this is old? No, this is new. This, this is a new one. It literally started popping up today. I I saw a bunch. So I don't know if you she want to talk about this or picture. not. But she doesn't look like she's aged a minute. No. Look at that. She looks great. Her mom yeah. has great genetics too, though. Jeez, she yeah. looks fantastic. Um. Anyway, there's a couple of quotes. By the way, again, this is this is so lame because I noticed these things because I've been watching this guy for a long time. But Brendan has this tell when he's about when he feels kind of uncomfortable. He needs a bit. He has this thing where he does this thing with his lip. A little side thing, like look, it's a little tell when he's when he's like raging. You saw it sometimes in the Bobby Lee um, Kalala interview when they were grilling him. Mom yeah. has great genetics too, though. Jesus, she yeah. looks fantastic. That that little side thing that he did, that little side thing is a tell when he's furious. But she doesn't look like she's aged a minute. No, look at that. She looks great. Her mom yeah. has great genetics too, though. Jesus, she yeah. looks fantastic. <laughs> um anyway there's a couple of quotes my ex thrived on playing fucked up mind games with me when i had a fight coming up and instead we hide that we were dating so he wouldn't be labeled ronda rousey's boyfriend hold on hold on uh mind by i by mind games i mean maybe going mia like just not as travis headed into the match bro that's a bad mind game if your partner has a really big ufc fight up and you just ghost her that especially if that's your girlfriend that isn't a good thing that's not just like expected like mia like is that okay just to go mia on somebody when they've got a big fight coming up <laughs> i love it actually i pretended it wasn't personal then that is until it was on live tv and i lost my goddamn mind screaming at the top of my lungs get him travis while punching the arm of the person on the couch next to me. 
Yo, big up young Felipe. Yeah, you're right. You probably he meant that. Um and I might have to agree with you. I probably will read it just, just for the sake of it, just to kind of put some content up. But she does sound great. Have you heard her speak on pods lately? Oof. That's definitely CTE, man. It's tough. Tough. Big up Ronda Rousey. Big up QT. They are trying to make a boxing match with him and Travis Brown. Ronda is in on it. You think so? You think this is the play? <sighs> Who wants to see that, though? I know we would we would love to see, you know, Brendan get back in the ring, but who wants to really see does anybody even know who Travis Brown is? Weirdly enough, Brendan's probably more famous than Travis Brown. Like there's people do people actually know who he is? Outside of like hardcore UFC people. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that's just a good theory. Is this all a play? A rollout for a fight coming up soon create fake tension but also what's the angle brendan trying to what get her back brendan trying to get revenge for the ufc fight it's like you were out fought by a better fighter who basically retired you what else can you do i don't know he's not gonna win a, she's not gonna win a, if you couldn't win uh, yeah he's not i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know interesting theory but i'm dubious on that one big up qt hmm that's how, fair how's this news in a book that's fair oh i love how him and brian are not on the same page brian's reaction to it is proof that what brenda said was probably true that sounds like brendan and he's like being defensive which is understandable too because he's being called out but yeah yeah uh, i'd be i mean it just to... started popping up like crazy today really yeah didn't the book come out like a month ago though i don't even know dude <laughs> to be honest how's this news what do we what? no let's not let's not do that let's not try and discredit the segment the section coming out because you don't like what it says let's maybe address what she said again i find it funny so far we've not heard him actually address her accusations against him or allegations you know and also i love how he immediately knew it was him you know like oh it's no one knows it has to be me of course it's you but you know you're not really named in it but anyway who we date oh, 14 well, I, I, 13 when years that, ago when travis knocked him out at the end of the first round i didn't think uh tko to be fair yeah that was true that's true uh, ground and pound <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> first lie keep going yeah uh i didn't think it'd get any more gratifying uh my ex covered up on the ground while travis pounded away on him the referee waved the match over then travis towering over the crumpled semi-conscious Not, body nope, of it wasn't ex. unconscious Hold and on. also wasn't crumpled i was in <laughs> downward dog okay you were on your tummy you were on your tummy it was yep. it was a dominant position you were dominated by the by the by the bearded viking hold on but no one's saying that no. i was not <laughs> okay. crumpled and semi-conscious nope, nope. yeah i was he, fully he conscious. leaned down and whispered oh yeah he still argues against that by the way and big up um big up ryan harley of, sorry, Ryan Harty. Travis Brown would have been champion if he didn't blow his ACL. He was, no, he was really good. I liked him too. He had a really good style, but, you know, um, I just don't think, no name-wise, unless you're balls deep in MMA, would you know who Travis Brown is? Regular people. They don't really pay too much attention to it. I don't know. Maybe he has, again, he does have some really good wins under his belt, really good performances. But for me, and just looking at it from a general, norm, what's it called, casual point of view, um, I think that'd be a hard fight to sell. Especially with the angle of what him being Ronda Rousey, I don't know. I don't get the angle. What's he trying to do? Win her love back? Get his revenge on a fight that happened, like where he was clearly outclassed in the UFC fight? It's like, um, yeah, I don't know. Sucks that he had to fucking um, basically retire in it um, from the UFC. But yeah, he was he he was good. You're right. Spread something in his ear. His words were indiscernible to the camera, but I swore. Oh, oh by the way, um, I love how Brendan keeps arguing that. I think even after the fight, he was really annoyed that the referee stopped it because he said he was still conscious. He was telling the referee not to stop it. He's like, bro, you weren't going anywhere. You were flat out on your belly. He was on top of you in dominant position, banging the back of your head. It wasn't going to go anywhere. And, the, and I think at the time of 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 it, it happened, there was still like a minute or something left of the of the round. You know what I mean? It wasn't looking good for the guy. And I don't think Brendan was the best off his back anyway as well, so... I swear I could hear Travis's voice saying, Ronda says, fuck oh. you. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Ron oh, he had to laugh and he can't. He... Okay, bring up Brian. I think Brian's getting his own back here because Brendan didn't like that, but you had to laugh because, you know, he's laughing. 
I think he's get. I think this is a little bit of revenge from Brian. He's just laughing about this thing, and Brian Brennan has to laugh, but he's not happy about the laughing. No, <laughs> um, that never happened. No, I, no, no. Yeah. But he did whisper in your ear. I don't know what he said, but he. I remember him looking there, whispering. I love how he doesn't clear up what he said. If he didn't say that to you, what did he say then, Brendan? Could you tell us? Because the only people that would would have heard what he said clearly is Brendan and Travis Brown. Maybe Travis Brown told Ronda Rousey after the fight what he, what he said to him. But also, maybe Adrenaline's running. He probably didn't remember. I don't know. Maybe it was in the heat at the moment. But I like how he doesn't clarify what he actually said. And I, I don't think you could hear it. I don't know what happened. but uh, Yeah, I don't think he said Ronda says fuck you. I, I mean, didn't he come, to your, did didn't he come to your dressing room and say, I'm glad you're okay? Uh, in the back, yeah. Yeah, he said, I'm glad you're all right. Yeah, I'm glad, he's you cool. Know. You have no issues with him. No, he's I, cool. I, I, how's this new? It says it was uh, shipped April 2nd. It's not because it's a new book and you're a prominent you know unfortunately podcaster and U ufc proponent you are one of her last major boyfriends after before travis brown the fight also retired you that spurned the whole ub so like i don't know why he's trying to act like this isn't like mma obviously they talk about anything they talk about everything like come on why is he surprised that these people are talking about this can we address what she said apart from like trying to discredit the book can we address the allegations? <sighs> Do you guys think that's true? Big up Keith T. I think we caught Brendan in a lie. Travis never said that. Oh, I can't believe it. Do you think he would lie about that? Because Travis Brown could just come out and just say, I didn't say that. Why would you lie that Travis Brown came to your locker room? Because that sounds that sounds believable. I'm sure there's fighters in the octagon that will do some super disrespectful shit, scream at you while you're on the floor unconscious, you know, point at you, tell you suck your dick in the octagon. But then, when you go back into the green, when you go back into the change room in the back, where it's like only the fighters and the team are there, respect for another warrior. Hey, by the way, apologies for what happened in the ring or the octagon. You know what I mean? Emotions got the better of me. Happy or okay? I can see that. I can see that happening. Honestly, I can see that happening. I can see that being like, you know what? Let bygones be bygones. I can see that being a thing. If he lied about that, yo, I can't wait. I can't wait for that to be exposed. If he did lie about that interaction with Travis Brown to make himself feel better. It was just what happened. It's her life. It's how she felt. It was the emotion she was going through. I will say this about. I'll, I'll say. I'll say. You, let me, you, hey, can I speak on this? Yes. Do you yeah. mind? Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Tetchy. You know what's funny about that response? Most of the time, when Brendan gets called out in public, he lets Brian speak for him. So Brian's only doing what he's used to. That's his role in this relationship, in this partnership that they've got going, in this dysfunctional marriage. Whenever Brendan gets called out for something, for being a douchebag, for doing some shitty things, saying some crappy thing, Brian's the one that steps in front of the bullets, steps in front and bees his fucking, you know, he's basically the, emo he's basically his human shield, right? Um, let's actually see, I've got, what's, what's that human shield meme? Human shield meme with a fucking soldier. You know what I'm talking about, right? That's, yeah, that's basically it. That's their relationship. So whenever, you know, whenever there's an allegation, whenever something is said about fucking Brian, about Brendan, Brian's always quick to step in front. Always, 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 always. That's Brian Callan. These are the allegations or things that people say, and that's Brendan lying there. You know, you know, that's him lying right there. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. If um, if I wrote a, this is the difference. If I wrote a book, she would not be in my book. I like how Brendan thought that was a zinger. That was going to be the mic drop. If you had a book, you wouldn't write her in. Okay. But she put you in the book because you were a major part of her life at one point. 
you impacted her negatively. So she spoke about you for literally, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it like, it's two paragraphs. It's not even that long of a book. It's two paragraphs, if that, of a book where he's not even named. <laughs> right? She speaks about it because it's a part of her story. She basically calls you Ronda Rousey's ex-boyfriend, essentially. That's what she's calling you there. Um, so, yeah, okay, don't put her in your book. That's fine. But she's going to put you in hers because you guys had a relationship. It's perfectly normal, I think. I don't think this is out of bounds or crazy. Obviously, he's upset because it makes him look bad, but oh, she wouldn't be in my book. It's like, he thinks that's a dunk. Like, she wouldn't be in my book. Bruh, what's your book going to be? Like a pamphlet. Your book's going to be one of those pamphlets that you get at reception of hospitals about like STIs and stuff. It's like, it folds out like that. Is that what he, like, what's his book going to have? I read Rogan. I got rich. Cool. <laughs> like what's your book gonna be about anyway come on bro it's gonna be fucking paint by numbers that's what his book's gonna be his book's gonna be the first memoir that includes like a paint by numbers thing it's gonna be a picture of him and you got you get to paint it at the back like come on bro this if um if i wrote a this is the difference yeah it, 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 <laughs> exactly Exactly. OJ. Brendan's book will be titled Joseph Rogan. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. And it will be one of those things where it's like Joseph will like spell out something like, you know, um jumping over setbacks, um, entertaining people, like humor. Do you know what I mean? It'll be one of those type of things, like <laughs> it'll be one of those type of things. I swear to God, that's how his book will be. <laughs> the jo the Joseph Rogan mindset or something. Uh, or um what you call it? Uh <laughs> on it on it chronicles, right? On it chronicles. <laughs> oh, or it'll be titled Be the Hero of Your Own Movie. You know that epic fucking motivational rah rah Brendan thing. Also, um, I love how I love how the woman in Sanaz is just screaming here. Look at her body language. I love how the woman in Sanaz is screaming here. She's just sitting at this, hearing this dude make excuses for his abusive past, arms crossed, judging. Look at her; she's not happy. <laughs> Sanaz is really the the body language is screaming here. She's like, "What? He would not be. She would not be in my book." Like she's like, "What the fuck is this nigga even talking about, man?" Anyway, let's continue. If I wrote a book, she would not be in my book. Like that, that like that's not a, uh, that's not like a. Also, he's probably not allowed to talk about her. Knowing how Hispanic women are, right? Women from that kind of part of the world, they're usually very possessive and very jealous, right? Very hot blooded. He's probably not allowed to talk about her anyway. So it's not as if like he, if he could, he would. But he's probably not allowed to write about her in his book. Like, if he did put one out, he's probably not allowed to. Uh, an event in my life that I would put in a book. Well, I think you always said, I've never heard you say anything but really great love her. things about her. Love her. I've have no issues with you, Travis. I, I think she, that's she, important. I think that. now the way the media. Brendan saying, I love somebody, and that's my. it doesn't mean anything. He tried to say him and Bobby were still friends after he fucked him over and tried to fuck his girl. It's like, um, I wish I could say the same thing, right? Epic reply back. Brendan saying he loves somebody, great guy, doesn't mean anything. It's just empty words. Treats her, I think, is not fair, but some of it's justified by the way she treated the media and, you know. The wow. So if it's justifiable how the media treats Ronda, is it justifiable how the YouTubers treat you? Hmm. some of the comments she's made but you know people forget like what she did for women's mma and oh, she there, there would be no female mma fighters if it wasn't for ronda for a variety of reasons yeah. from the way she looks her skill set her mindset the way she competed like you're talking about an ultimate competitor she put women's fighting on the map yeah that's, that's what insane. i'm saying yeah. so in day in yeah, she put women's fighters on the map. Let's not say there will be no woman fighters without Ronda Rousey because they were there before her. She put she put women's MMA on the map, but let's not say 
there would be no fighters without her. Like, let's let's relax. And that's Dana. Shortly before Ronda came on the scene, went women will never fight in the UFC. Then he sees Ronda. He's like, um, maybe they will because she's a savage. And people want to talk about like Kobe mentality too. I've never. I'm sure Kobe was a savage. R there, there should be Ronda mentality. Yeah, like savage. Well, you, I remember you always looked up to her in a way, like just her, savage. her mindset and her. So, yeah, yeah, savage. Brian trying to fucking cop please for Brendan, of course. He knows his role very, very well. He knows how to keep make sure the the gravy train keeps running. You always want to shut up. Um, but I, I, again, I'll say this: like if I write a book, which eventually I'm sure I will, that like it, and well. this isn't a knock on. How do you say will like that? Well, what do you say? Well. Right, like just her, savage. her mindset and her so, yeah, yeah, savage. Um, but I, I, again, I'll say this: like if I write a book, which eventually I'm sure I will, that well, like, it, and well, this isn't a knock on her. Maybe sure I don't know I well. interest in her past relationship. This isn't a knock on her. Maybe, um, but I, I, again, I'll say this: like if I write a book, which eventually I'm sure I will, this isn't a knock on her. Maybe I don't know what the book's about. Maybe if it's like love. Yeah, big up, uh, big up, uh, Warren Kenner. Her judo is nasty. They're just really good strikers now. They kind of, uh, they kind of weren't then. Yeah, that's the thing I always felt about Ronda. Why I felt it was also kind of tragic how it ended, because it was sad to see the game just like pass her by while she was still active. You know, it's like fuck, bro. Things move on while you're still trying to do your thing, and you just can't keep up. Like it just is the nature. That it's just what it is, and it was just sad to see because she was having to try to make up a skill gap that she was never going to make up and these people were younger hungrier it's just like it was never going to work out so it's quite a sad to see how it ended obviously she didn't handle it the best when she left the ufc and shit but it was just <sighs> yeah just like god damn it bro one minute she's like molly whopping everybody next minute she's getting made look like she can't fight you know, because no one had a problem with her, with her like <laughs> shitty shadow boxing and hitting the mitts crappy, right? No one had a problem with those like horrible hooks she was doing in, in the in the promos until she got murked a couple of times. Then everybody started to look at her striking dodgy. But no one really had an issue with it before because you never saw what good striking was or what high level striking was. Then suddenly it got high level and she just got left beat. I don't know, man. It's, it's a real tragedy how it happened. Like she probably deserved... <clears throat> You, you can't say she deserved to go out on the top, but I think she deserved to go out better than that, you know, for what she did for the sport. She deserved to go out better. But again, the UFC is like, they don't play when it comes to the matchmaking. Like, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, they throw you to the young, hungry wolves so fast. Like, there is no, like, warm-up fight. Like, especially when you got the belt. Like, there's no warm-ups. There's no padding of the records. Like, not really, for the most part. You just get thrown to the wolves and people are hungry. Because UFC doesn't pay them as well that well, so they got extra incentives to get the belt because they notice how much of a big payday is. Of interest in her past relationships, and that makes sense. I'm in the book. Yeah, big up Jack Donny Jr. Remember when Rogan said her boxing was be was what? Her boxing was a uh, was better than Mayweather's. Exactly. <laughs> big up Fashion Road man. Her ego also played a part. Tried to trade with home and Nunes, knowing full well she has no hands. Yeah. <sighs> That Amanda Nunes one was a one that I have to admit I felt every blow. I felt it because I know what it's like to fight somebody like, especially like sparring, and you could tell they've got more power than you and they've got more precision, and they're just like, bah, bah, bah. It almost felt like I was like. I, I, I think I absorbed, I felt those punches and she had no idea what to do. She was just like dancing all over. Like, I felt so, that's a fight that broke my heart. I swear to God, for, for her, I broke my heart. Holly Holm, yeah, obviously that was fucking crazy. Though. She got caught with that fucking head kick. But the Nunes fight was just like, that was like a, what they call it? That that was like a bully. You know when you get ragged, I don't know what people would prefer. If you're a UFC fighter, what would you prefer? A bully beat down or get ragdolled? What's more embarrassing? You know the bully beatdown where they come when the fighter like knows that you you ain't got nothing for them and they just come at you with their arms down, like uh, looking like making you flinch, bang bang. Like, what's worse, or getting ragdolled, just getting like picked up, you know, um, <laughs> taken down from minute one. Like what what, what Khabib used to do? What's worse, getting Molly getting ragdolled like how Khabib used to do people, 
or getting just blown up, like how France used to knock people out. What's worse? I think the Khabib, the Khabib one is worse, isn't it? You remember Khabib against, um, what's his face? Khabib against the Brazilian guy that just kicks. Remember that one where he was like looking up, like he was like, <laughs> didn't know what to do. What was his name? You, you guys remember the <laughs> Khabib just like destroyed that guy's will. He crushed him. Do you remember who I'm talking about? I forgot his fucking name. The one that just the one that kicks really good. But is it Barbosa? Is that him? <sighs> Let me see if I can get that actually. Uh is it Khabib Barbosa? I wonder what's worse for a fighter. Like what actually hurts the ego more? What's what's harder to recover from? Like could you remember this? Do you remember how one sided this was? Like Fuck you now. Ragdoll for yeah, big up uh happy to see Ronda get put in her place. Barbosa, Ragdoll is worse, big up for everyone can get lucky punch, but someone just controlling you is peak. Yeah, for sure. That's that's actually a good point, actually. That's actually a good point. You can probably rationalize it in your head that way too. That's probably why knockouts probably don't affect fighters as bad as they probably should. Because you not you got knocked out. You don't remember it anyway. But you remember you remember a ragdolling. <laughs> you remember a ragdolling. Like, do you remember this face? He looks so helpless, bro. He looks so like yeah, this is the one I remember. That's the face. That's the one I remember. He looks so helpless. Like, he didn't know what to do. He was like stunned. Like, how do I get up? Why is this guy on top of me like this? Mummy, daddy. Like, he wanted help. And no one was willing to help him. Look at that. Look. <laughs> Just look. For the hundredth time. Like. Look at that positioning. Look at how high. Look at how high up. Like look at that. Look how high up. Can we, like total control. Up against the fence. You're not going anywhere bro. You're really not going anywhere. He's trying to get like. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Big up fucking Edson. Is it Edson Barboza? Yeah, big up Edson Barboza. That's the one that made me feel sad. I'm not going to lie. I felt kind of sad. I felt kind of sad, bro. Like, look at, look. It was just total domination. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Getting bullied. <sighs> <sighs> anyway, let's continue. But, like, my book, her and Travis wouldn't be. Yo, big up at 24K. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw the Diddy stuff. Check out the previous stream um, from today or yesterday. I, I talk, spoke about the Diddy stuff. Fucking crazy. It's crazy how people see this stuff, innit? During the day and it drops. I guess because I'm terminally online. I saw it the moment it came out. I was like, what? I was on stream. I, no, I was on my feed actually on Twitter. I was like, what the fuck? I thought it was a skit. I thought it was like a made up bit thing. I didn't know it was real. Um, so it's mad, isn't it? How regular people just see stuff when they see stuff. But when you're terminally online, you think everyone sees it at the same time you saw it. It's like, nah, some people have jobs to do. Some people have like families to look after. <laughs> some people have responsibilities and stuff to do. I'm just on my phone all the time like a fucking psycho. But yeah, bring up 24K. Be a highlight of my life. You know, it's just not, that That wouldn't make my book. I'm flattered, I guess. Wow. You know? <laughs> I think it's, that's, that's, Broad is a bad motherfucker. He's such an asshole, isn't it? He's such a, like even in the, even in this situation where Ronda is known to be a bit of a asshole herself, in this situation where Ronda maybe isn't the best, isn't the most believable narrator, Brendan still manages to find a way to come out of it looking like an asshole. That's the talent that he has. Really, it's a talent. Really, it is a talent. <laughs> that is one of the talents. Like, even in a situation where you should come out of it looking better than the other person because Ronda's widely, you know, derided and stuff, he still finds a way to make people not like him. <laughs> it depends how you look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I. Either way, I think, uh, I think uh, it is what it is, man. Relationships are relationships, and. And but to bring it up, everybody has 14 years later. <laughs> Can we, no, but let's talk about the Ronda, Ms. Ronda Ravi's ex boyfriend or boyfriend. I would like to hear him talk about that because that would be actually be a good moment of like vulnerability and honesty. Imagine if he said, Yeah, actually, it was kind of hard dating somebody who was at the peak of their powers in the UFC while I was, I was getting like mollywopped 
by like I don't know whoever that who's who's the fat guy with a with a gut that that knocked out Brendan, right? Like maybe that, that that's a good point to be like vulnerable. Like yeah, I thought I was gonna be a champion and I was getting like steamrolled by these guys who I thought I was better than. Like it was hard to be in a relationship with her because she was obviously the star and I was obviously trying to make my name still and it wasn't going well. So yeah, maybe I did feel a little bit yeah, R R Roy Nelson, sorry. So maybe he sh that would be a good point to be like, hey, let me be a bit vulnerable, let me be a bit self-deprecating. But nah, like, oof. it's it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, but she has kids and it obviously worked out and like, it, it's just it's life. Like we weren't a match, so like there's yeah. When she says mind games, no, it's not mind game. I love how he's not even he's not even spoken about that bit his yet of the book. He wouldn't be late. So I had a fight coming up and he insisted we hide. We were dating so he wouldn't be labeled Ronda Rousey's boyfriend. I love how he hasn't mentioned this, the RRB. Please mention the RRB, Brendan. Can you point to that exact bit of the fucking quote? Could you speak about that, please? Games. Like yeah. the mind games came from, in all honesty, her camp. Like that was the trouble she had. Of and th course, that's a whole nother issue of that course, she. Of course, of course. It wasn't me. It was other people. Of course, the classic Brendan Shaw thing. I didn't do anything wrong. You just read it the wrong way. It got clipped out of context. <laughs> I didn't mean it that. It's like, bruh, no accountability at all. I love it. I love it. If you don't know what she's talking about, just stick with that. Saying you you don't know, but then saying it's the team's fault, classic. You can't address. I have nothing to do with that. I didn't train at her camp. I don't know the coach. I did nothing. I have nothing to do with that mind games i guess from when she means mind games that would mean i just it's it wasn't into it wasn't a match it just wasn't a match. So, so yeah so and you you were around during that time and you knew this i'd be like dude i don't know what to do love the girl yo big up um abe martinez personally i would not want to be walked down like a prey an animal and get starched that's very embarrassing to me if a guy ragdolled me and just grapples me the whole time i'd rationalize it scared to throw hands with me and trade punches he's how i could rationalize it and that's true I, I understand that but i think having heard all the explanations i think i'd be i'd hate way more getting ragdolled i think the feeling of being helplessness help helplessness will be something that you couldn't shake you know that'd be something i'd be i'd find it hard to get over like knowing how because also i personally think, i don't know if you guys believe or agree with me but i think it's easier to learn how to defend takedowns or improve your grappling skills overall than it is to improve your striking I just think there's a seat, unfortunately, unless you start it at a certain age, there's just certain shit you're just not going to be able to do as some high level people. So I feel like knowing that you got ragdolled and you got dominated by somebody who's far better than you and that you're never, ever going to catch them is a very sobering feeling because now you know, oh shit, I can't really ascend up the rankings now because everybody above me isn't just going to strike. They're going to mix it up. They're going to be mixed martial artists in the true sense of the form, in the true sense of the word. And the fact that I don't have that in my arsenal is a real, you know, issue. I don't know. It's a real issue. I think even um, even uh, Francis and Gunner is a good example. He basically improved a tiny bit of his grappling defense. And look how much better it made him as a fighter. Look how much dangerous it made him because he had obviously the God-given knockout power but then he was able to stuff takedowns S suddenly. You know what I mean? Like that helped him considerably. So I think the grappling thing is easier to learn or easier to close that skill gap. It's not, you know, you're still not going to do it maybe in some respects, but <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. Knowing you're inadequate and knowing you, you tried your best and you still can't match people. It's just not going to hurt. It's just not going to land well anyway. It doesn't matter. Girl, as a friend, well, you, but when yeah. it came to that, I'm like, dude, it's just not. She's not my person. I found my that's person. It, she's not it, my person. It. So it's like, it's not. If it's it, not a match, I remember you wanting it to be. I remember. We you tried. Were, it's just not Brian, man. Shut up, Brian. Shut up, Brian. Shut up, Brian. Shut the fuck up. Oh my god, bro, it's so embarrassing. Like, he would never do this for you, honestly. He wouldn't really, honestly. I hate this fucking. Let him speak for himself. Let him try and defend himself and put his foot in his mouth. But I guess Brian's also smart. Doesn't want Brendan to speak for himself and say the wrong thing and get them both cancelled. He needs to keep this podcast running. But it's like, what, 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 were you in a room where they were fucking? Probably was, knowing Brian. He probably was. 
Oh, can you send me pictures? I, not, Wanting it so badly to be your person. It's because, just not. Because you loved everything about her. Uh, you might not want to say that because he's married now. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes in life, it's just, it's just for you, it's just not a match. No, for you, it just it's wasn't. Just, it's not and, there. And, and again, I've the, had that before. And it doesn't mean she's a bad person or I'm a bad person. It just, it, it, we're just not. Yeah. It was never going to work. I remember that so well. And I had to have that conversation. I remember you, I remember you calling me. Oh, it was me awful. That. You were like, yeah, I, awful. I, I want, I remember it. I went, I remember you said, I want, I want so badly because I, there's, I like everything about her. I love everything about her. She's such an amazing person. I just, and I said, I go, you got to go with what your heart is telling, what your gut tells you that when you, when you decide to marry somebody or make it your life, that is not a rational decision. No. Like you can, you can. Hey, 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 you have two marriages. I don't want to hear anything from you, bro. You divorced your first wife to go with a woman that was like, what, in her thirties or some shit. You popped out two babies while in the midst of rape allegations and you still don't want to be a stay-at-home dad or spend any time with your family. Any excuse you go to tour, you find it and you leave the family. Like, let's not let's not try and hear any kind of, you know, beast of a dad, beast of a husband talk from Brian Callan. Please, let's not hear that. You know what I mean? He's the most like, you know, yeah. Yeah, let's not hear that. The ring is just for show. Look at all their accolades and all their stuff. I think I think enough. when you choose to make it that person your person, this is how I feel about my wife. I don't know why I could give you all her awesome qualities. What about the first wife then? Why why was she not your person? Because she got annoyed that you were going away. Because that's basically what it felt like from what we remember seeing. On the, remember that? Well, do you remember when you got divorced? Do you guys remember this law? Do you remember when you got divorced? And Brendan was saying, oh, yeah, now he's much happier. Do you remember that? On on, on Les Street, on their podcast. Yeah, he just, he looked different now. You're going to be way funnier now. Your comedy's definitely going to improve. Like, she was holding him back. <laughs> like, she was holding him back. Do you remember? Like, Brent, Brent, Brian's ex-wife was a reason why he didn't get his comedy special on Netflix or something. Like, come on, bro. Come on. Qualities, but I don't know why... One day I looked at her and I went, you're the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. Like, you're the one. Mandy W, he's banging Snaz. I don't think so. I think Snaz knows how to play the game, knows how to, like, you know, navigate a working environment where she's seen as an attractive woman and not let anybody smash or not let anybody hit. I, th I think she just had to, like, play that game to her advantage, you know? Make sure you get your invoice. Oh, babe, can you pay my invoice? Did you get my invoice? Like, you know what I mean? Like, make sure the invoice gets paid. Make sure the fucking, you know, travel is covered and, you know, expenses get covered as well or get paid back, but not enough to kind of give up the fucking, you know, the clam. I don't think so, personally, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I couldn't tell you. I can't you're bottle just, that. You just know. Yeah, you just know. But in the last conversation, the last words I ever said to her, I said, and, you know, told her how I felt, told her it's just not going to work. Uh, clearly both upset. And I said, and, and you will never talk to me again. I know you and we will never talk again. And we've never talked again. Sucks. Never. Never. Not a single word. So that's kind of wild, though. It's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That is kind of weird. I've even had some very contentious breakups and, you do exchange something. It doesn't have to be like anything. Maybe it can be a little bit of a, you know, you might spin the block, you know, and get a little in just to kind of, you know, get out all the tension and kind of make up for lost time. But you might exchange something, maybe a double tap, like something, like, come on. No, anything gets exchanged? No, any words at all? It sounds like a toxic relationship on both sides. It's not though. But I mean, but then you never talk to her again, but like you said, like kind of popping up in a new book. Yeah, but bro, <laughs> Sanaz, Sanaz, be very careful, darling. You're actually a good introduction. You're actually a good addition to the pod. You're breathing some life into an already dead. The pod's on life support. But please mind your P's and Q's. Be careful. Be very careful. He doesn't like getting challenged. He doesn't like being questioned. He doesn't like being contradicted. This will not end well for you, darling. Please. <laughs> Relax. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> that is so funny. That's such a good point. 
You never spoken and you're on the hmm. <laughs> one more time. Never. Never. Not a single word. So that's kind of wild, though. It's not, though. But I mean, but then you never talk to her again. But like you said, like kind of popping up in a new book. Yeah, but Bron- but Bron- she's not t- talking to me. Yeah. Like she's not. I'm yeah. popping up in the book like that. What? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. What the fuck's Uche talking about in the chat? What's she talking about? How is hate fucking less toxic than not speaking? Huh? Guys, what's she talking about? I don't know. What's Uche saying? What's Uche talking about? <laughs> what's she talking about? <laughs> what's Uche talking about? I have no idea what she's talking about. What's she talking about? Huh? What? I think that's like something that what she's saying. I don't really know what she's saying, but like, I don't know what she's talking about. No idea. <laughs> and that's in a negative, like that. that's the highlight Travis and her and what she was going through. I'm sure it's like her last few fights dealing with camp. Yeah, you were a mention. Uh, getting, you know, uh, you know, her relationship with Travis, how that started. And then I'm in that story, I assume. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just like, the, and then she explains that. Like, I also think it's hilarious. I think it's. It- you said, no, I think that was out of context. I don't really remember. I think that was out of context. I don't really remember. I don't really remember. Like, I don't think that was actually me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe my microphone kind of like, maybe the cable was a bit loose. Maybe someone, someone said there was an echo, right? Maybe it was, maybe it was my echo. Maybe it was a delay. It made me add some words on there, but I don't really know. I don't know. <laughs> the, the, what I love about it is that she goes, I could have sworn he mouthed Ron as yeah. fuck. Maybe, that's, maybe he that's did. That's poetic justice. Maybe he great. did. Yeah, yeah, maybe he did. Well, in her mind, they, 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 it sounds like in her mind, that's what, that's what it did. It didn't say he said that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Why did Brian Callen say that's poetic justice, by the way? Brian Callen said that was poetic justice. If Travis Brown did say to him, Rhonda says, fuck you, that's poetic justice. Why was that poetic justice, Brian Callen? A sworn he mouthed Ron says, fuck. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe he that's did. poetic justice. Maybe he did. Yeah, yeah, maybe he did. Well, in her mind, they, 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 it sounds like in her mind, that's what... Brian is licking his lips, mouth getting dry. That's what it did. It didn't say he said that, because I don't believe... Maybe yeah. he did. Love ya, Uche. And, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember and asking. He, and if he did it, I remember asking you. And if he did it, you were concussed. <laughs> it's like you. It wasn't like you were hearing. Wasn't that concussed? You know. But but even even if he did say that, I it was maybe. Hold on. We saw how he concussed he got when he knocked his head on the fucking roof of no. When the airbag knocked his head when the when the truck flipped. He's trying to tell us he didn't get concussed a little bit when he was getting pounded on the back of the head from Travis Brown. And I think he's actually bigger than him, isn't it? Wasn't Travis Brown taller than him? Oddly enough, because Brennan's tall anyway, but Travis Brown's a big dude, bro. Like, okay, he won't concussed, I guess. Bonus points. He did. But even if he didn't, if I'm writing a book, fucking, I would have made it way worse than that. Mm-hmm. I would exaggerate way worse than that if I was to sell books. I remember you got in that, forget all that. Oh, so you would exaggerate and lie to sell books. Good to know. I remember when you got in that ring, I was with you every day for that camp yep. i remember when you got in that ring and you were like i've done everything i can you were all ready and i swear to god <laughs> when i saw you because your head was so in podcasts and you had one foot in one foot out which is well, like i was making more money famous, doing podcasts the yeah. famous podcast with rogan and he said that and i remember i i don't think brian's enjoy i don't think brendan's enjoying how brian's laughing at the thought of brendan being an octagon the way Brian is laughing <laughs> about it, thinking, I don't think Brendan's liking how he's laughing because it's almost like he's mocking him, you know? Oh, Travis, what the? F- he's six seven. Yeah, I knew it. I I always remembered him being very proportionate body wise. Like he's just long everywhere. He's got long arms, long torso, long legs. That's what I remember. Yeah, you know I mean, I remember that. And and also he's like, he's really good striking. The kicks, like it's actually kind of wild how big he is. But yeah, I'm not. Yeah, fucking hell. Brendan had to really go through it, in it. <laughs> he had to really get some big dings in the head to fucking quit. But I saw you because your head was so in podcasts, and you had one foot in, one foot out, which is. Well, like I was making more money famous, doing podcasts. The yeah. famous podcast with Rogan, and he said that. Of course, Brendan brings up the money thing. And I remember, I remember seeing you. You, you got, you were across from from Travis. I looked at you. I swear to God, you looked like you had just woken up from a nap. Your hair was a little messy and you were like this. You were squinting and I was like, 
Oh no, no, no. yeah. And I think I was with Tim Tebow at the time. Tim was there. He was watching with no. His Tim came. No, Tim came to the Andre Arlovsky fight. Okay, that's yeah, right. Not the, that's right. But I remember seeing this. And no, I was, I was ready like, for that fight. I don't think that's fair. I was ready for that fight. I was ready to go. I just you know Travis just better. Like people forget. Like you know monster. Travis fought Cain Velasquez. Yeah. Uh, you know he fought Verdum. Like. Yeah, you know, Josh killer. Barnett, like uh, Gonzaga, he was. I just remember, like, he, we had a trip. I wonder, you remember when he said about Steve will do it? Do you remember when he said Steve will do it and he was threatening Steve will do it? And he was like, Oh, that's a good point. I didn't see that, Uche. That's a very good point. I could see that happening too, actually. I could see that happening very, very soon. Callan's already in that phase. He could probably, yeah. What would he tattoo his head? Oddly enough, I think Cannon looks better when his hair is actually shorter than what he's got it now. When he actually cuts it way shorter, it actually looks quite good. It's not, it's not, not bad, especially because he grows a full beard. Just mix it up that way. But I don't think he likes looking his age, unfortunately. He doesn't like looking He doesn't like looking like an older dude. He, he, look, he wants to kind of fool people to thinking he's in his 40s. It's like, bro, you look your age. Like, just refine it and make it look good. Just, you know, make that look good. But I don't know. Whatever. Everyone's got weird ideas in their head. Um, what was I gonna say about this thing? Do you remember when Steve? Remember when Brendan was threatening Steve would do it, and he said, "Oh, um, unless you're Francis Ngannou, unless you're um, right, what's that thing called? What's his name? That Ryan guy that does the fucking grappling, the jujitsu dude. All these people, you can't beat me. And it's like there's a lot of USC guys that beat you. Why don't you name me? He was naming all the elite people in their in their fucking discipline, but he wasn't naming someone like Travis Brown, like." You know what I mean? But it's good he's giving him his flowers now. Training partner I thought was similar size and he wasn't. Like yeah. Travis was so big. Oh fuck. I remember like, when he, with it, he had that wide stance. His his athleticism and he, you know his basketball background, like he's a fucking nightmare. Man. It couldn't be a worse matchup. Also, it made no sense either. Like I was coming off a loss and then you pair me up Travis ranked number three in the world. So it didn't make a lot of sense. They waited to get him out of the UFC. That's my theory too. I don't know if you guys remember. But back then, Brennan was talking a lot. Brennan was really going in on, on Dana before even Ariel was doing it. He was, re to be fair, let's give Brennan his flowers. Like, he was speaking up for fighter pay. Maybe it was all self-interest, but he was really screaming about it. Like, he was probably one of the only main big people out there to do it, especially a fighter. Especially nowadays, fighters don't like to upset the apple cart. But he was really putting it out there. And I don't think the UFC liked it. So I think they purposely were giving him fights to get him the fuck out of here. Like, I personally think that was a that was a case. So, I'm not too sure, actually. If it, that's a good question, KP. I'm not too sure if the fight was post Eskimo Brothers, but he definitely wasn't in the good graces of Dana, and I forgot who the other guy was. I remember Brendan said he fell out with the other guy, who's the other... He's the guy behind Dana. He's the other guy that does the matchups. I forgot his name. Um, white dude. Dark, dark hair, glasses. I'm sure some of you guys who are balls deep in UFC know what I'm talking about. I think he also might be a matchmaker. I forgot his name. And he's sometimes there at the UFC fight nights. If Dana's not there, he's sometimes there in the crowd. I forgot his fucking name. I think Brendan, I think Brendan fell out of that guy as well. And that's obviously, you know, he basically fell out of everybody. Is it Hunter? Is that his name? Let's see. Um, Hunter UFC. What's his name? Yes, is it? Is that Hunter? Yeah, Hunter Campbell. Is that him, right? Hunter Campbell. Yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. Yeah, Br Brennan allegedly fell out with this guy too. I remember he mentioned him before. This dude. So. Whew. Yeah. Tough one. Tough one, tough one, tough one. But again, props to him for speaking out about everything that was going on there. Um, let's continue here. If I put my tinfoil hat on, I could give you some reasons why that fight happened, but I'm not going to, okay? I'm not going to do that right now, but, you know. You know, I, you know, I go back in time, and, I, and I just think to myself. You... Let's see. Maybe, it's, maybe it was Joe Silver. Maybe you're right. Brenda the show up. Yeah, maybe it is, yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's Joe Silver. Yeah, you're right, actually. I think I remember Joe Silver. You're right. Big up, who was that? Uh, big up, Patrick Spicer. I think you're right. I think it was I think it was Joe Silver. Look at all the headlines. Slams. Yeah, let's, let's read this one. MMA News. 
I think I think uh, you're right. So as a former fighter, the the let's see what let's see because these things are always full of fluff. Let's see what do you say here. What did Brennan say? Yeah. Um, Joseph, <laughs> look look how the, <laughs> obviously Brennan's way of talking never change. Joseph was a savage man, a fucking savage. He was a guy who was on the Sherdog forums. He was a big fan and he got this role as a matchmaker. Do you, really? Joe Silva was on the forums of Sherdog and ended up being a matchmaker at the UFC. What an insane come up. Um, matchmaker at the UFC dealing with the toughest guys in the world. Joe Silva is 5'1". He's this little Sherdog forum troll who had a lot of power in UFC. He had a lot of power. He controlled guys' destiny. He got drunk on ego. He was a motherfucker, man. The stories that will come out of this if they did gain traction, I don't think it will, but I would assume every fighter has a Joe Silva story. Joe went, uh, so went on to say, you better not treat him like your fucking friend. I don't know. I don't know. Standard, isn't it? It doesn't sound like standard UFC shit. I'm surprised Brendan was surprised, to be fair. And then he went on to... The, he, he went. The, the funny thing is, he then went on to do stand-up comedy and use the same kind of bully boy tactics that they used on him to other comedians. That's the funny thing about a situation, isn't it? That's the funny situation. Do jujitsu and get a black belt? No, I would have... That, that, I would have been a black belt. That, I, I, I want to go back in time and I want to take, be three months before that and I want to say, hey, you... You're gonna you're gonna practice one thing for this fight. He's gonna have that wide stance, and you're gonna practice driving your shin into his into the lower meat. No, of his no, cap. that's stupid. What that's do you mean stupid. stupid? That's not what I do. Low kick. No, they, hey, bud. Hey, three months before the fight, let's work on a technique you don't you do at that the up high. In, you no, couldn't pick that up in three months. No, no, that's stupid. Because for I, I've I've I think I've thrown one head. I threw. I'm not talking about head kick. I love how he's dismissing, like, ever trying to improve his skill set to improve his chances of winning a fight. No one's saying you have to be high level, but just offering that as a threat to the opponent should help, in it? If you're able to throw kicks to a certain level, it's going to make your opponent think twice about doing certain things because you've got more tools in your arsenal. No, no, no. I'm just going to say, okay, I guess that's why you are not in UFC anymore. <laughs> Big up Super Jello, yeah, exactly. Joe Super Adamiga, exactly. Yeah, oh my god. I'm talking about low kick. Even harder. So <clears throat> we can talk about it. So I, it's not my thing. I don't. I never, never threw kick. kicks. I never kicked. It's know, not my do, thing. Can you just like and fucking? Do, do you have to? Hey, do you have to fucking piss on my parade? Well, yeah, <laughs> I do. Like I'm just because it's not realistic. I mean, well, no, but I want people to know like that's the thing. So in order to to do three months before a fight, you're learning. It's not real. It's of course it's not realistic. No one's. That's the thing. I think people who lie a lot and people who refuse to accept responsibility, they love this because I notice this again. Low cows do this all the time. DSP Wings of Redemption Boogie. They always go to extremes. There's never just us like. No one's saying you're gonna be fucking Edson Barboza in three months. No one's saying you're gonna be fucking Wonder Boy Thompson in three months with your fucking kicks. No one's saying that. But surely working on something to nullify the threat of the other guy is an option. It should be, especially if, the, especially if you know what you know. If you know what you know, you're not going to learn anything new based on what you already know. You should already know how to do that, whatever you're good at. If it's him, is punching, if it's grappling, whatever, he should be good at that already, right? Or jiu-jitsu. He's not going to improve his jiu-jitsu to a considerable, but he probably will improve some level on his striking. You know what I mean? Exactly. I just said, like, it's, if you're a good athlete, you should, you know, there should be something there. It's like what we saw with Francis Ngana, right? Obviously, he went from zero to something, but still, we saw improvements fight by fight as he kept kind of learning and progressing and changing coaches and camps and stuff. Brendan's just pure dismissiveness of it. Maybe he's got a point again. He's a former fighter, so he knows more than us anyway, so whatever. Um, but not being open to that at all oh, probably explains why his, his career worked out the way it did in fighting, you know? No, nothing new. Really? Nothing. No. You can't put that in your, uh, your Fuck quiver? no, no, no. Just hey, you're not a kicker, become a kicker. No. You would work on that like ye pro what, years prior. Oh, man low low kicks like what why that you, that you couldn't it's not what i do <laughs> it's not what i do but then you do everything else that's a funny thing it's not what i do but then he's the master of never staying in his lane so make up your mind do you not do you stay in your lane do you don't stay in your lane
If you had, if you had Pereira, who was like, "Here's what you're Alex? gonna do." Yeah, he could teach you that shit. You're pretty athletic. It it, I mean, it just it's just it's just it's hard to explain. You probably wouldn't you wouldn't do it in the fight, right? No, like get, he might punch you in the grill, time it. No, it's none of that. But if you if you're not like if you're not a leg kicker and if you're not training that, know the timing. Okay, cool. So big big up everybody here adding more insight. This is this is very interesting. Um big up Warren Kenner. He loaded up on his punches so much that yeah, AZ, you're deaf, right? Your de your deaf can faint them. But if you lose if you use them, they're not in point, you could get rushed. Okay, very good point. Yeah, exactly. You start opening yourself up. Okay, very good point. Um, big up Bratola in Japan. Three months before a fight, you can't practice new shit because it takes longer than that, but you're fighting three times a year. So in the three months between the fight, next camp, there's no point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Three times a year, especially if you're not injured. If, yeah, three times a year is optimum, especially if you're not injured, maybe more. Yeah, it's probably a waste of your time to do that, isn't it? So you never improve. Makes sense. And look, I said, okay, low, low kicks are technically harder than mid kicks. Hmm. And he just doesn't have the, again, he's not really the, he's not, what's that word called? He's not like a student of the game anyway, right? He's not coming, he's not like that type of person. So maybe it's not really necessary, especially when he's, if his mind doesn't believe it, why even go that way? You know, like it's not, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I think you guys, I think, I think he's probably right in this respect. Maybe Brennan is right in that respect. Maybe he didn't know what his strengths were. Um, he's just, you know, unlucky that he probably would have got further in the UFC if he joined maybe a few years before he did join. Maybe he would have got by with just the level that he had. But unfortunately, as he was progressing, the the skill level just kept improving. And he obviously, he wasn't... At every, he, might have, he might have had the stature and the build and the athleticism to be there. But skill-wise, he just wasn't... You know, he shouldn't have been there at all. He probably should have been in Bellator or something of that ilk, or even in Bellator nowadays. The the competition there is fucking crazy, but he probably really didn't even belong in the UFC if you think about it. You know, really. And how right. to do it? Let me adjust. And my, then, and the, let me just adjust my time machine. And then to do that, and, and Man, at, at the highest you, level, if I'd gotten you two years before that fight, dude, I would have had you drilling you fucking go. low kicks. Yeah. Sorry, the time. You know what I did? The the dial was at three months. I meant to put it at two three years. years. Three years. Three years. Three years. <laughs> you need three years. Three years, probably. Dude. All right. Three to years. To do it at the highest level is tough, man. To download and put it into your game, it, I mean, it takes yeah, yeah, yeah. years, years yeah. and years. And then not only to, let's say, the three month thing, so you're doing camp, but then when the lights are hot, you're going to do what you know. Yeah. Like, you're not going to try new shit. Unless you're Verdum. Verdum did a flying fucking. He did a flying sidekick. He does that in practice. Hilarious. That's what Verdum does. <laughs> that was yeah. hilarious. But yeah, I mean, kicking, that it would be wild just to throw that in. Unless you're really Bad. focusing all the time, yeah. Bad. But Doom is doing flying sidekicks when he's sparring. Uh-oh. Hmm. But yeah, shout out to them for the book. Hopefully hey, how about... Oh, it goes well. Condescending. What's sure, I'm sure it well. What's the book called? Fuck Look, Brennan. Honestly... How does he speak English that way? I'm sure it will. How can I spell? I'm sure it will. Is that an accent thing? People in the stream chat, if you're from Denver, do, De do Denveronians speak like this? Uh oh. Denveronians. <laughs> Denvers. But yeah, shout out to them for the book. Hopefully it goes well. What's I'm, sure, I'm sure it will. What's the book called? I'm sure it will. Fuck what Brendan Schaub. <laughs> uh, our fight. I'm on the cover. Our fight. <laughs> Our oh, fight. Is it about her and her? Uh, Our fight mean when me and her would argue? <laughs> God, she looks great though. Does she look uh, great or what? <laughs> fucking what a, you know, when, what is she doing? Is she in? I love the blinking. I love the blinking. He's fucking pissed, bro. I love the blinking. I love the blinking. He's blinking extra hard. Look at the blinking. For the book, hopefully it goes well. What's sure, I'm sure it will. What's the book called? Fuck what Brendan Schaub. <laughs> Extra uh, blinking. Our Look fight. Blinking. I'm on the cover. Our fight. <laughs> our oh. fight. Is it about her and her? Uh, our fight. Man? Mean when me and her would argue? <laughs> God, she looks great though. Does she uh, look great or what? <laughs> fucking what a, you know. When what is she doing? Is she in the WWE now? No, she left WWE. Yeah. I think she just. Hmm. For someone that doesn't talk to her or know anything about her, he knows a lot about her, doesn't he? Hey. Wanted to be the fuck out of the limelight, huh? Is that kind of what it was about? My fight. She also made so My much fight, money. Fight. She doesn't have to do anything. Like she's sat, man. No, this is an old one. This is yeah. a 2015 oh, one. So, yeah, Sonas. Yeah, she's also made so much money. Like she's won. Like she doesn't have to do anything.
I'd love it if on that screen where it shows the Amazon thing, because if when you buy books, if you know, it will show you, oh, you purchased this book. I'd love it if like accidentally it showed that Chin actually bought it. So he was lying. He did buy it and read it. You know, that would be funny. I'd love if that little bar came up on here. You purchased this book on. <laughs> he already had it. <laughs> yeah, big up uh, Vic Trolla in Japan. Um, Vic Trolla, being scared to try something new is also why you lose. My coaches would teach me new shit before a fight and I would just never want to do it because I knew and I got beat. I'd, I'd never, I'd revert to what I knew and got beat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That makes a lot of sense. That's why they always say like, a lot of stuff, especially at sports, is all mental. Most of it is mental because it is, right? Because if you, if, if that goes, there's no hope at all, zero. Um, you see it a lot even with people that aren't technically gifted or talented. I think a lot of athletes say that, especially the ones that are self-deprecating. They'll be like, yeah, I don't have the records of talent, but my mindset was just ironclad. You know what I mean? Could, could always push for adversity, um, you know, whatever. All that sort of stuff is really important, maybe more so than actually your skill set and shit probably you'd imagine especially at the highest levels as well but yeah you know it ended how it ended for brendan it, it was it, it probably ended well for him anyway because you know he still ended up being what he's being now mm -hmm. she did it well, there was a moment where she was thinking about coming back is hmm. that is that rumor that was rumors yeah that was just rumors she yeah. never said it hmm. wasn't brendan spread that rumor didn't Brendan put that rumor out on purpose and fake it? Wasn't that what was that story? Do you guys remember that? Didn't Brendan put out that rumor himself because he said he went just to get views and shit? Or am I or am I thinking about somebody else? Didn't he start some like shitty rumor about somebody coming back? It wasn't actually true. But she did transcend athletics, man. She was. Oh, I don't know why. Forget, why feminists aren't writing uh, teaching like classes on her as a because she's an asshole. Unfortunately, she's a real torchbearer. She's a real fucking, um, you know, uh, what's that thing called? She's a real legend. Should be looked at that way. But unfortunately, she was such an arsehole when she left and clearly still is an arsehole now. People just don't want to talk to her that. That's the only problem. Her attitude kind of fucked her, really. Which I don't show if it's her attitude, if it was CTE, but yeah, she just, you know, unfortunately for her. Trailblazer. Agree. The first person to come in and show like a bunch of bros like myself and everybody else that women have the same ferocity and heart yeah, as men do when exactly, it comes Justin, to fighting. Exactly. I mean, in a uh, lot of ways, uh, they want to win just as bad. Uh -huh. You don't. Uh, think so? I don't know about that, but um, I, do I do think, like she, the, it's almost she needs to hire like a, a PR team to help her because she's she's very which is good too. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She's gonna tell you what she thinks. But the way she's handled the media since she's retired, it's like almost like overshadowed her accomplishments, which she's basically. Is he trying to say that Ronda Rousey needs a handler? Remember how he reacted when, when Rogan said that about him? Can you imagine your ex-boyfriend saying that you need you need like a PR agency because you're too reckless? Did you remember when he got upset when Rogan said he needed a handler and he's now trying to say uh run the rouse needs one she probably does but it's just funny didn't he get upset when R rogan says anything about him you see the hoist gracie of female fighters yeah like she is what hoist gracie stood for for men she's the hoist grace for yeah, women she's the pioneer like she didn't hoist gracie couldn't strike didn't have all the skills but you know still won became a champion she was kind of similar couldn't really strike dominated and then it catches up to him but that doesn't take away from what they did yeah so uh, it's it's like she almost needs a higher PR team just to mm -hmm. soften and be like, hey, it's okay to say Holly Holm was better at striking. It's okay to say Amanda Nunes fight was, you know, you were going through some tough times and that was a bad fight. Like you, you can give them their flowers. It's all, you can give people credit. But again, this is one of the downsides. When you have her mentality and you have that Kobe mentality, uh, uh, and I, I think her mentality is probably even... <sighs> For someone that doesn't want to talk about it and doesn't know why he's in the book, he has a lot to say. That's why you're in the book. <laughs> Stronger than Kobe's. When you have that Ronda mentality, they're not that, that the downside, it doesn't, that doesn't come with it. They mm. will You know what's funny about this? He doesn't have her talent or didn't achieve what she did, but he acts exactly the same way. <laughs> you know, that's funny. Because she's got an excuse because she was obviously really good. 
at a time when everyone was it doesn't matter if everyone's crap she was dominating so you could probably argue that maybe her success changed her and she couldn't handle not being the baddest bitch on the planet it was difficult to like be seen as not good anymore when you are running through people right i can understand you can kind of rationalize why she's you know hard to like and stuff or unlikable brendan had none of that he had none of that and he still had the competence of a fucking george Shane pierre or something you know what i mean like you have none of the talent but you act like you know what i mean he's like what so that's the interesting part of it never give you a fucking itch mm. and that's why she's the greatest female fighter of all time she won't give you a fucking inch think about it, this book is what are we doing we dated over 10 years ago there yeah. the, i'm in your book like think about that yeah you like know, savage you know is that way dan gable <laughs> why is he so surprised though you were the only ma major boyfriend that she had before travel like why is he acting like she's being an obsessive stalker or something it's interesting the way he's trying to pay is he trying to act like he's a victim look he's got the victim hand though he's doing the victim hand that's not nice he's doing the classic brendan's a victim hand no remember he's got a really he's got a good range brendan isn't it one minute he was threatening to beat the brakes off of steve or do it next minute he's saying ronda rousey's bullying him <laughs> i love it dan gable remembers my friend wrote a book and interviewed him dan gable remembers and in detail the one match he lost in high school of and course. and and talks about it of and course, talks yeah. about it like but the, the, the ultimate winners are like that like well, ronda's a winner everything she did judo this whatever she does she what, WWE. About, what about michael jordan's uh hall of fame acceptance speech you savages see, yeah just, just, yeah big up sean he only gave her an inch big up fucking sean there's yeah. not a lot of sincerity like no. kobe savage yeah like the, the the those elite people and there's not many of them especially when it comes to athletics or whatever yeah big up jerk Dunny jr not in sport but in the same thing happened to him in showtime when he partnered with them exactly that's being what he's down for exactly hogan savage yeah. rogan doesn't forget anything no he's like a baby elephant dude no does not forget that tattoos he, he does not forget and he'll be like and he he he, likes, he forgets like nothing else. i do imagine imagine bringing up rogan in this situation oh my god will will sh will shut you out of his life too. and you're it's out like, forever not me no 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 you and i are we'd be the worst judges the worst cops no I, see i don't i don't I'm, i wouldn't say that like i i, I could do my job but when, like it's not good to hold <laughs> he doesn't want to concede anything <laughs> i'm i can do everything i'm the best guy no no no, no. i'm the best like that like some people I, use, like, hold on you know what i find really insulting when people do shitty things, but then expect you to forgive them instantly. Maybe it's the religious thing as well. Yeah? Yo, big up Don Dota, Wagwan, Wagwan. I hate that shit. Like, I'm going to do a shitty thing to you, but then you have to forgive me now and do it right in front of me. Give me a hug. Make, tell me, no, it's, let me know it's okay. Are you sure? Are you sure? It's like bro you don't get the you you don't get the, you don't get the right to do that you know what i mean like i'm allowed to feel how i'm allowed to feel about the situation please don't you know rush me into accepting and forgiving or forgiving what you said or what you did and brendan does the same sort of thing here it's like you can be an asshole to people but because you forget they should forget is that what it is it's collective amnesia because you are over it they're over it what if they've got a grudge is that not all right can they not have a grudge or no Dude, I wouldn't. Cool. I wouldn't trade my mindset for Ronda's. No. Even though maybe that would have made me a champion, but that comes with once you retire. There, there, there's some darkness and there's some heavy shit there, man. And like when you're raising kids, it's not good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Brendan basically insinuating that Ronda Rousey isn't a good mom because she's writing about him in her book, which is less than two paragraphs. Oh, the more he talks, the worse he's making it. I understand he's pissed off, but off. But so, you know that's that's one of the downsides. Like, it, and it's in everything: business, friends, friendship, yeah. relationships. Like, it's it's tough. Yeah. But it takes you fucking high, man. I think I think uh, for me, I I. Believe, but I better booked as well. That does great. My my thing is this about everything. I think. 
trying to act unbothered. I want to do great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just called her a bad mum. Just said she's obsessed. Make her seem like she's a stalker. Mentally ill. <laughs> Hope it does well, though. Hope it does well. I think forgiveness is a fucking miracle, and I think forgiveness should be exercised all the time. Yeah, oh, big up TV Huck. Exactly. And big up Asada. I was here earlier. That's it. Exactly. He's just playing the fucked up mind games here. Exactly. That's exactly what he's doing, isn't it? That's the mind game. <laughs> Acting like he doesn't know what he did wrong. What I do? It's like the Yuri thing. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? What, because the fucking TTS called you infertile? The TTS said you look like a bag of chips. Why are you crying? <laughs> and I also think that just on in general, if you have a grudge against anybody in life and, you're, and they're renting space in your head, I think you're turning your back to an extent on your future. No, shut up. The person that allegedly has raped some people and harassed people and the guy that bullied people and shit on people on his way up is not saying people to... Nah, 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 nah. I'm a strong believer in sometimes never forgiving, never forgetting. Or if you're going to forget, if you're going to forgive, cool, but never forgive. Or if you're going to forget, no, if you're going to forgive, cool, but never forget. Or sometimes both. No. Like, it's okay. And also, I, I think it's very, it's just very, like, it's just entitled. There's a sense of entitlement there to expect people to be like you, like, emotional-wise. Like, some people just don't take things lightly. Some people are just not going to, sometimes it's a small, sometimes it's things that you don't even intend for it to be bad. It was done with the best of intentions, but the person just didn't receive it well. And they said, fuck you. Sometimes you don't make, a, sometimes you don't get a chance at first impression. I've learned that. Everyone learns that in life. It's just to live with the consequences of it. It is what it is. But you don't get the opportunity, you don't get the right to like, make it seem like they're being obsessed because like, it's like, everyone's different. Sometimes, and look at Rogan. Look at how far Rogan's got with that kind of attitude. With knowing who to cut off, who to kind of back, like, it's done him pretty well, to be fair. These guys having this weird open door policy and being welcoming. Look where they are. Exactly. So I think I'd rather go for Rogan's mindset of like, you know, let's cut off the fucking freaks and the weirdos and let's go that way personally. But again, what do I know? And I, I and that there's a book called The Tools. Phil Stutz talks about that. Is that a quote from the and book? Yeah, yeah, it is. But I like it because but I thought about I, it. This from because the there book, are people right? in, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that's uh, you stole the line. No, but I'm you, like, there's actually this book, and I'm like, I've, well, I've, that's I've given, I've given it credit. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, uh, but it when I read it, it made sense. I went because there are always people that in my life certainly rent have space. They're 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 living rent. <laughs> like a uh, Tiggerman, right? Like that woman Tiggerman. Like that woman Tiggerman, probably. Like the uh, editor of the fucking Los Angeles Times, Amy Kaufman, right? I'm sure some of those people live rent free, he said, right? Maybe maybe even Whitney Cummings. <laughs> maybe the new uh, booker at the comedy store who said, no no more grapists allowed. Like, there's probably a few. <laughs> Kalala's sister. <laughs> free. Yeah, rent free. And when I read that, I went, damn, man. Fuck, just give love. Just shoot love. Mm -hmm. And just, just. <sighs> shoot love. I think that, is that sexual assault or no? Forgive and forget. Shoot loads of love, man. Shoot. You said it best. I didn't say loads, though, dude. Why'd you say that loads? That means a lot of love. No, load, dude, I don't like the way you said love. it. A load of no, love. No, dude, that's a different kind of love. I'll give you a load of love. That's a different kind of load. It depends. Let's take a little break. Yeah, of course let's take a break. Br Brendan was exhausted having to talk about himself and in have any type of introspection and have to face the consequences of things like, you know, face up to maybe the things that he did in the past and how it negatively affected people. It's exhausting. Oh, what'd I do? Oh, who did I know this time? For fuck's sake, get over it. I'm over it. You should be over it. What a weird way to live the live in the world. But, you know, what could we do? That's fucking Papa. That's fucking Papa. But in all, I think, like I said previously, I've, I've had this, um, I have this theory that you can't be in control with people's once you have no my it's fucking trying to find the fucking thoughts in my head when you go through something with somebody they have an experience of it you have an experience of it 
And because you've engaged in that situation, whatever it be, sexual, relationship, friendship, they have every right to share whatever their side of the story is, however they want to share it. You don't have a right to control how they say it. You might have your own point of view of how you see it, but it doesn't validate, it doesn't validate theirs and theirs doesn't validate yours. But I think some people that do fucked up shit don't like people even mentioning it. Like, why are you mentioning it? It was like, why are you annoyed that she's mentioning it? Like, of course she would. Like, you're part of her story. Like, it is, you You guys are intertwined. Like, it is what it is. Some people probably don't even know you and, you know, probably only know you because of that as well. Like, that played a part in the knowing of him. Like, I don't know. Like, it's a weird thing about why he's trying to, un he's trying to make it seem like she's some instant, like, she's, she was one of the most famous if not still one of the most famous UFC fighters of all time, MMA fighters of all time. Like, like, it's a good thing that she's mentioned you in a book, really and truly, because she's a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe, uh, maybe there's other things. Maybe there's other things included there. Maybe there's other things. Who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? 